Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's riff, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about weird DAX. <laughs> we really are, aren't we? <laughs> um, very weird, actually, as it, as it yes. transpires, because the more we delve into this DAX, the more we realise there's particular weirdness about it. Is that fair to say? I think that's very fair to say. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yes. So let's not leave anyone in suspense. What, which DAC are we going to be talking about? Yeah, it's uh, this one, which is the Sugden Masterclass DAC 4. So, great name. Yes, it rolls off the tongue great. I I don't know if there's ever a DAC 3 or no. a DAC 2 or a DAC 1. Okay. But, um, okay. Yeah. But it's a, a masterclass in DACs. Yes. Well, that's probably what they would like you to think. And it's a really interesting form factor, actually. I, I really quite like the look of yeah. it. Um, I think it's quite funky. It's, uh, it's sort of, I guess, half size. Is that fair yeah. to say? Um, quite a deep little thing as well, you can yeah. see there. Um, with lots of sockets on the back to please me, of course. <laughs> so, so I've actually set a timer to see when you start. To Did we get to a minute? To, no, we didn't. Okay. To, to mention that word, but it's if you like to do, you think actually, isn't it? The honours. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Um, I really like it. It feels premium, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got a it's got a really nice selector switch on the front, which sort of clicks yeah. merrily at you. Yeah. Um, even this sort of on-off switch feels quite premium as well. Yeah. A couple of little lights on the front for, yeah. for digital lock and all those things. Yeah. Um, and then some some inputs and outputs. So um, normal left and right outputs yeah. on the so back. Unbalanced RCAs. Unbalanced RCAs. And um, three coax ins, I think, and a couple of uh, yeah. toss links. There's uh, two toss links. Yeah. And also, for me, which I think is really useful, is yeah. the USB. Yeah. Because then I can just plug my mobile straight from my USB C yeah. to USB, I want to say A, but I might be wrong. Uh, um, yep. Straight into this, yep. and we're in business. Yep. And you know what I also like about the Sugden here is they've 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 had the courtesy to put a digital out. Yes. So if you just wanted to use, you know, if you want to use an external DAC, then you could. Yes. So, you know, so all good stuff there. So um, basically, it becomes a digital switch. So uh, yes, you can plug this DAC into another DAC. So you could it's, indeed. Um, it's should you so wish. It's kind of really so for mini discs and uh, CD recorders and that kind of thing, isn't it? But, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, Which yeah. we have plenty of. We do. Well, you do particularly. Yeah. <laughs> and and the the mini the mini disc and CD recorder thing is a, is a great segue because this is uh, from 2015. So which still people were just about normal people. I'm still using it now, obviously, but normal people were still you know at the very tail end of those kind of physical recordable physical media stuff. Uh, yes. Then. Yeah. Um, but that's the only the kind of introduction to That's the, the tip of the weird the, iceberg the tip of the uh, beautifully put mike yes um, the tip of the weird iceberg <laughs> and and boy this is a weird iceberg it is it is so like, as icebergs go on a scale of weirdness this, this is, is 10 top of the weird scale yes, yes. And, and i think we should explain why well actually not at all i think you should explain why well i, I don't think i should let's just forget about that <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it as so, being weird. Yes. <laughs> no, but but seriously, in the words of Phil Collins. Um, so, so this is a this is a strange product, um, and um, so maybe a little bit of context first. So if you uh, are not familiar with Sugden, um, it is a um, I think strange is not the right word. I think eccentric. It's an eccentric British company. I think maybe the, even they wouldn't. Uh, disagree with that, and we uh, like that. We we love but that. There's nothing yeah. we love more yeah. than eccentric yeah. British companies. Yes. It's our bread and butter, yes. isn't it? So uh, we're we're not talking kind of mainstream, you know, uh, here at all. They haven't actually made that many products over the years, no. relative to you know practically anybody else. Um, and well, they, I associate yeah. them more with, amp with amplifiers yes. than yeah. anything else. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? It is. They've made and, some yeah. some crackers over yeah. the years. Well, the A twenty one was originally uh, designed in 1967. Uh, and that's their sort of classic Class A integrated amplifier. Um, and they've been selling variations of that since then on. So, yes. Um, and, you know, I think obviously it's true that the, the current A21 is, you know, an evolved version, but it's really not that different to the original. Um, you know, it's almost as if Porsche were still selling you know, air-cooled 911s. Um, Imagine. Yes, albeit, you know, vastly 
kind of tweaked and improved uh, 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 compared to the originals, but still the basic same thing. And um, so Sugden have, have, have made their name for this with this amplifier, this A21, and I've reviewed you know, various versions of it over the years, and it's a great amp. And we've actually had viewers kind of saying, when are you gonna do a Sugden? Well, um, sorry, this is the wrong Sugden because everyone wanted the A21, but we will do that. Uh, at a certain time soon, hopefully. Um, but I just thought we should do this now because it's such a weird product, but yes. weird in a good way. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what's weird about it? Um, well, um, number one, it was launched in 2015. It's still on sale. So in DAC terms, that's virtually, you know, medieval. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, prehistoric almost. Um, uh, but but the really the really special thing about it is that it is based on a uh, Philips uh, chip technology that came out in the mid '80s. So um, why? Well, we'll we'll find out in a minute. But um, it uses um, two 16-bit uh, four times over sampling Philips DAC chips, um, and these were the uh, basically it's an offshoot. It's a kind of cousin. Of the TDA fifteen forty one chip, and you, I'm sure you remember that chip well. Now. I do. I remember um, selling that chip within Philips CD players, sort of back in the eighties. Yeah. Um, and and I also remember when it was replaced by uh, the the first ever Bitstream chips in the early uh, Philips CD players as well. Yeah. Um, which didn't sound as good. No, I don't think they did. But yeah. I, but I wouldn't also say that they had a lot to beat because I didn't particularly like the previous. 16 yeah. uh, Philips players either yeah, so yeah. you know the, the, it wasn't um, yeah it wasn't a great era for, for from my perspective for Philips um, I remember when that Bitstream chip came out I think it was the 630 or something like that so yeah. the so 6 series CD players they had various different ones with various different buttons on yeah. the front um, and uh, the, the one which was top of the range which was like 640 or yeah. something had about a billion buttons um, but it, it was hailed to be you know Bitstream is here and it's going to revolutionized everything yeah. and it really didn't no um, it was quite disappointing but this bad boy doesn't even have that chip no, in it does it no that's the scary thing absolutely. isn't it absolutely well the the um the, so the td um 1541 um i think was 1985 and that was philip's first ever 16-bit four times over sampling so before that the very first generation of philip's players had the TDA 1540, which was the four times oversampling 14-bit chip. Um, and, um, you know, they, they got a very good reputation for sound quality, but everyone was, you know, if you remember the 80s, it was the specs war. So if everyone else has got a 16-bit four times oversampling, why have you got a 14-bit four times oversampling? So obviously they had to do uh, a 16-bit version, and the 16-bit version was the 1541. And that kind of went on to be a a, a, um, a cult chip. Yes, and, um, yeah. you know, it was used in an awful lot of CD players, and Marantz especially in their high-end stuff, you know, because Philips were generally kind of fairly sort of mid to low price CD players, weren't they? Yes, and, um, yes. If memory serves, the, the highest, the best, as it were, best CD player that Philips used the 16-bit chip was the CD... 950. I remember that. Yeah, yes. Which was a very good player actually, but very few sold because it was know, expensive. Yeah, it was expensive. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Sorry about this. It's a long story, but basically um that that chip became a kind of cult chip and even now there are a lot of people who swear that the 1541 is an amazing sounding chip. And um so Sugden does not use that. It uses a 1543, which is a kind of a cousin of the 1541 it's got very similar internal architecture and it's basically a kind of slightly kind of down market version of the 1541 as far as i can tell by looking at the application notes and so on online um and uh but it is still a 16-bit four times over sampling chip yes and so and and that's like an early 90s vintage i believe so why if you're subdon and you've done uh, you introduced your new DAC in 2015. Do you use a chip from, from the early 90s? <laughs> so, um, based on a better chip from the mid 80s? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> um, it's a brilliant question, isn't it's it? It's a very good question. And yes. um, 
So let's let's recap to 2015. Okay, it's eight years old now, but but we were already using high res then, weren't we? We were already we know, were loads yes. of ESS sabers and stuff had at least 24 bit 192 yes. capability. So why does Sugden use a chip that can only go up to 16 bit 48 kilohertz? Um, and uh, the answer is, and I'm I'm reading this. Um, from their uh, fr from the, uh, the the response I got from them when I asked, um, instead of accepting <laughs> and using the latest digital trends, we produced um, a product meticulously engineered to play music. So there you go. There we are. So what happens then if you put yeah. a high res um, source into yeah. this? Well, as far as I can tell, and I and I was uh, you know talking to Sutton's. Uh, very helpful PR guy, uh, Dave Spears, about this. This machine will accept, as far as I can tell, up to 24192. Um, so, but it won't play in 24192. It'll down, down sample. It basically down samples um, down to, to basically 16, 16 bit. Um, and um, so it's got kind of high res receiver, receiver uh, chips in as it were in terms of the sockets what it can take in it will receive that but it won't play in that resolution okay so okay. here we have a DAC that has been on sale for for eight nearly nine years um and it is um uh it, it is uh you know a current DAC it's currently on sale it's not like it's a classic DAC and it is designed only to play up to uh, up to 16 bit uh, uh, resolution, as far as I can tell. Um, so yes, that's a bit weird, isn't it? I've got a question. Yeah. Do we care? Well, that's a good question because we listen to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and I really really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Um, it's it's definitely got something. It's got uh, it's it's it's. Oh, it's like a little Yorkshire terrier, isn't it? That just yes. won't let go of your ankle. Yes. Um, it's totally excellent, I think. Uh, it, it it's musical. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's it's it it doesn't. It's no holds barred. Yeah. Dak, isn't it? It's just straight in your face. Yeah. Have some of me, and we played it with some some really cool tunes. Yeah. Um, we did quite an extensive session with um, with one of your Boz Skaggs albums, which I didn't even know you had. Um, and um, there you are, look at that. Uh, Boz Skaggs, uh, Silk Degrees. Yep, so it's a Lido shuffle. And it sounded great. It had yep. it had uh, dynamics, it had pulse, it imaged yep. brilliantly. It was really, really detailed, which was actually the bit that's... That no, that's bar no barcode. No viewers. barcode. So, no. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah, we need, to, we need to not mention that, the no <laughs> barcode thing, because that's still a best You're kept still secret. You're still trying to buy... I'm still trying to buy as many of them as okay, I possibly right. can, so we won't talk about Sorry, that. Mike. Next Sorry, Mike. Sorry, I interrupted you. Sorry. No, we're all good. Yes. Um, but it sounds great, and, yeah. and it really... It really kicks along doesn't it uh, quite yeah. merrily so yeah. yeah so to put some perspective we've been listening to another DAC which is um, I mean the, the firstly the Sugden costs 2,215 quid and um, uh, you know that's that's not cheap but but there are a lot of more expensive DACs around yes we've just been listening to a Synthesis Roma um, 69 DC deck, which is very good, and we're going to be doing another riff on on that one. Yeah, that's a really definitely. good one as well. It's that's really nice roughly deck. the same price. Yes, um, and um, we'd also been listening to the Chord Hugo TT2, which is a lot more. It's four yeah. grand yes. last time I checked. Yeah, um, and we've come straight from the Chord to the Sugden, and normally when you go from the Chord to any other deck. That it just sounds miserable. It does. Uh, but that was like, you know, a sort of... It was I great. Know. It was yeah. still great, wasn't it? It did so it many things really, really well. Ferret down your trousers or Yeah, something. very much so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Hi-Fi's uh, ever been described like that before. That's probably a world first yes. on riff. Um, uh, so, if I got that wrong, the, by the way, I apologise, uh, that where, analogy. Where, but, do, you, do you know where, where Sugden are based, by uh, any chance? Uh, there, I think they might be in Yorkshire. Are they? So, so it's a definite yes. ferret down your trousers amp then. Absolutely. Sorry, I mean, so. sorry with the dreadful... British stereotypes here. Well, you know, um, it's all it's all in the north. If you live uh, if you live in in Oxfordshire, isn't it? it? But so, what can I say? You know, except Cornwall. Uh, but so, uh, but no, really good. And you know, 
comes with a really strong recommendation. Yeah, so, I mean, I think um, that, uh, that, that it's, it's amazing, actually, because firstly, the, um, it is kind of deja vu all over again uh, with, the 16, with the 1541 Philips DAC chip. It sounds very similar. It's very, very similar character to that, um, and including the quite well-lit uh, upper mid band, you know, the CD was quite sort of stark and, and sort of bright a bit, wasn't it, back yep. in the day? Yeah. But obviously this has got a very good Sugden analog output stage. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been designed as a DAC with no oversampling or filtering of the digital signal. Um, and Sugden's output stage has been designed around that. Uh, uh, around that. So it's a kind of sort of specialized uh, 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 analog output stage. Um, uh, but it's, it's freaking good. It really is. It's so much fun. Um, and I think the, the best way to put it is it it just gets into the groove and it's got a really tight and, and enjoyable bass, hasn't it? Um, and strong dynamics and a real kind of, you know, kind of really sort of uh, um, absolutely sort of um, musical. Um, it, it loves music. It's so passionate, isn't it? Uh, it's almost kind of heightened sense of uh, yeah. sense of uh, yes. um, music. Obviously, you're only listening to 16-bit, um, and um, so you know if you're heavily into high res, uh, then you know you might want to still be able to listen to high res properly. So it's not for everyone. Um, uh, but if you're not, and if you know most of the stuff that most people listen to is still 1644, uh, often a lot of the high res has been you know, down sampled anyway. Yes, yeah. Um, so certainly some of the, a lot of those downloads uh, were, were a little bit iffy. Very much so. Um, but um, yeah, so if you're, if that's, if the high res, lack of high res functionality is not a big deal to you, this is a, uh, this is a, a, an amazing thing. And to this hear. is what Sutton have said yeah. pretty much in their, in their yeah. conversation with you, you know, sod it, it sounds great anyway, you know, forget yes. about it kind of thing. And it's a good answer. So, it yeah. is a good answer. Yeah. It's a really hard one to argue yeah. with as well. Now I've got another question though, and, and it's a, you know, I think the, the real, the crux of this is how have they done this? And kind of more to the point, mm. why couldn't, why couldn't people do this in the, 80s and 90s with this chipset yeah. right? you know, they've, they've, they've pr produced a little bit of magic from it haven't they yeah I mean there were various uh, things you know people doing all kinds of interesting stuff with the 1541s in, in the late 80s and early 90s and Marantz even did a retro I forget, I forget the name of the player now but they'd been heavily into Bitstream for about 10 years and then Kenny Shiwata decided that Bitstream wasn't any, any fun to listen to yes uh, and, and launched a, a new CD player um, with with uh, the double crown version of the six fifteen forty one DAC. Right. You know. Um, so basically, absolutely maxed maxed out um, yes, that, yeah. that technology. But yeah, I mean, it's it's not just how how have they done it. It's like why did they do it? And the the answer is it is such so much fun to listen to. So a lot of uh, viewers um, have been moaning quite rightly in my view. About why do we always say chord decks are so good all the time? Yeah, and the answer is because they are so good. They are they are superb. But actually, if if high res is an issue, this is in some ways just as much, if not more, fun. I think you know than, than a kind of chord, um, uh, you know, a cutest or something like that. Of course, um, yeah. And yeah. And, uh, and even snaps at the heels of the Hugo TT two in terms of musicality at half the price at half the price absolutely um, right. and it is so much more fun than so many of these digital products with ESS sabers in these days um, you know and, and the other bitstream <coughs> DAX but especially the ESS which tends in my view to have quite a sort of has a nice wide sort of sound sound stage it's quite accurate um, but it, it just seems a little bit um, low energy in terms of emotion. Sure, and this definitely isn't. It's it's the opposite. Do you know, it's it's interesting, and, and just digressing slightly, if I if I had this, yeah. um, uh, this stack rather, it actually wouldn't be an issue to me at all. And I'll tell you why, because I would pair this with a, with a, some kind of st streaming yeah. device yeah. Of, of my choice. Yeah. Um, and then my preferred streaming service is Cobuzz these days. Yeah. I, I think they're doing a, a great job. Yeah. And within Cobuzz, you can choose which version of the track you want to play. Yeah. I always choose the 16-bit CD quality really? one. I do because it, just as you sort of hinted at earlier, I find that you never you never know what you're going to get with the high res. 
Yeah. And sometimes, okay, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's really good, but not often enough for me. Yeah. And I know that if I always choose the CD quality, I'm, I'm going to get consistently yeah. a really, really good uh, a good sound quality. So it wouldn't be an issue at all no. for me with no. this. Um, and I find that's the way yeah. forward. I've, I've become a bit disillusioned with high res. Yeah. I thought it was, you know, the next big thing. Yeah. But it's just too often done too badly yeah. um, for me. It's yeah. nothing to do with the format itself, it's to do with the way it's been implemented. Yeah. And it's a great shame. Um, yeah, so, you know. I mean, I think, you know, it's capable of great, great results in many cases, but you still can't just go to it and expect it to be absolutely perfect all the time. No. Because there, there are all kinds of things going on. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and still, uh, uh, I think actually a high quality CD transport playing uh, pl playing 1644 is still really, really good, or it can well, be extremely good. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, the same. Absolutely. And, 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 you and know. because they're not particularly yeah. uh, sort of on vogue at the moment, yeah. then actually you can pick up some really cool transports yeah. for not a lot of money. Yeah. I was looking at, uh, do you remember the Wadia ones, of yeah. course you will, from back in the day? They made some quite decent sounding transports, yeah. and they were, but they were expensive. And now you go onto eBay and they're, yeah. they're, they're punting them out quite cheap. You yeah. can pick them up. As long as, you know, you can, if the laser packs up, you can, you can mend them and you can get parts and yeah. things. Also, um, you sold me one. You sold me a Sony yeah. ES uh, yeah. CD player yeah. just so I could use it as a transport. Yeah. Now, that would be a perfect transport for this, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It would work brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, just taking the 16-bit CDs and yeah. away we go and using the DAC from this. And yeah. wow, you know, yeah. super cool. Absolutely. So it's, it's not for everything, but it is kind of bonkers. It is. If you're, if you're into, <clears throat> you know, 16-bit. It really is. Uh, and and um, it, it's one of those things, you know, I mean, we listen to a lot of stuff, don't we? And just every now and again, something comes up yes. to really surprise you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that this is one of those things. Yeah, you know? I really like it. Yeah, I really like it. I do I think too. It's cool. Yeah, and it's... I could live with that on, on a you know permanent basis, and uh, yeah, and and not not feel like I'm missing out on anything. It's my new favorite two grand DAC. Yes, without well, there a doubt. we go. So there so, we go. Let's do it. Let's give, do give it. Give it back then, Mike. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do a reformator on it. Yeah. What, what are you going to give it? Well, um... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So for most people, it's sort of five or six or seven, um, yes, you know, yeah. um, I mean, the, the USB input will only go up to 16 bit, you know, 48, uh, as far as I know, um, it's, it's pretty uh, you know, stone age in some ways. Um, but for, for the particular job in hand, it's a nine, I think, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. at, at least um, uh, for the value for money, you know, thrills per, per pound, as it were. Um, you know, if you're a 16-bit person, then, uh, it, you know, it's it's your holy grail. Uh, and I think I am. Yeah. So I think it is. Yeah. So I'm definitely giving it a good solid nine. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great bit of kit. It is. So, yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I, all I can really say is thank you for um, for introducing me yeah. to it, because it's been a really fun yeah. listening session. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Well, it can't be easy if you're sucked in coming up with a replacement for that. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the fourteen ne bit. Well, the, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. That, that you know, that 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 would be a thing, wouldn't it? But you know, anything they do is going to have a modern chip in it, and and I, I can't see how it's going to sound particularly. No, particularly. That's better. why they haven't changed it, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah. absolutely. You can imagine them in their sort of R and D department going, "No, not no. as good. Yeah. No, not as good." Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so there, there we, we are. are. The yeah. masterclass, masterclass in how to uh, use a, a, a DAC from 1980 something. I see what you did there. Yeah. Masterclass DAC yeah. for Sugton. Highly recommended. Brilliant. Thank you again for watching another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.